Oh, um, definitely. My favorite thing to say is, is or I say it all the time, I guess, is like, if it was easy, everyone would have a six pack, right? Like we'd all walk totally. around, like I touched a dumbbell and now I'm completely in shape and everything's great. But, you know, and I think the people don't realize is like, yeah, maybe it's uncomfortable, but it's it's for your lifelong health. Like maybe you're in your 40s now, but you're not going to be forever, right? You're not going to be in your 20s forever. And yeah, sure. it's like you have to think about those things and maybe you're a little more uncomfortable now to be more comfortable later. Welcome to the Cooler Lifestyle Podcast. I'm your host, Matt Kuehlhorn, and I'm excited to have you join me as I interview community members and business leaders from the communities in which I live, work, and serve through my business cooler garage doors. We're going to bring you highlights on characters in our communities. Why? Because community matters, and I want to know more about who is behind our business and leadership in order to understand and support the community fabric that our relationships make up. And collectively, we can build stronger communities that support our lifestyles, our youth, and our health. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Cooler Lifestyle Podcast. I'm your host, Matt Kuehlhorn, and today I'm sitting down with Christy Buffington, owner of CrossFit Gunnison Out Cold Strength, and she's been... My coach in the past, I haven't made it into the gym for a little bit, which is a bummer. Christy, thanks for joining. Yeah, thanks for having me. Are you at your home? I am. Looks comfortable. Yeah, my dog's just <laughs> sleeping on the couch here. I love it. <laughs> Christy, where did you grow up? Brownsville, Texas. So on the border by the sea would be its slogan. So right on the very tip of Texas, right by the ocean in Mexico. Wow. Is that, um, I mean, it almost sounds awesome. Are you near the, like the beach? Is it a beach community? Yeah, we're like 10 minutes from the ocean. Okay. Cool. What was it like growing up there? Um, it, I mean, it was pretty awesome. I think that's where I kind of started being more outdoorsy, going to the beach, surfing, you know, with tiny waves, but getting all that in. Yeah. But it was, it was really fun. No seasons, though, which inspired me to move somewhere that actually had seasons. Uh-huh. Yep, right on. Um, so you're owner of CrossFit Gunnison. You purchased that from Faith, is that correct? Yes. Um, when did that happen? How long ago? Um, five years. Uh, July will be our five-year anniversary. Right on. Right on. Yeah. That's awesome. So give me a, a concise snippet. Southern tip of Texas mm -hmm. into... Gunnison, Colorado. I think if my memory serves, you had some time in the front range. Oh yeah. Uh, how'd you Lots make it into how'd range. you make it into the valley? Well, I'm I like a lot my parents my grandparents lived in Denver, so that always inspired me to move to Colorado. Mm -hmm. Um then I lived in Fort Collins and then Steamboat and then met Nate and we both moved to Steamboat and then you know, moved to Moved to Denver, which kind of allowed us to get all the gym experience that we came to Gunnison with, because we yeah. both managed and coached gyms for almost 10 years down there. But we were like itching to get back to the mountains. And so we traveled, kind of did a road trip like all over the US to see what mountain town we wanted to open a gym. Awesome. And our short list was like Sandpoint, Idaho, Big Sky, Montana, and actually Gunnison, Colorado. So that kind of like started a little fuel for the fire of where we wanted, you know, our next journey in fitness to be. Yeah. And like where we're going to open a gym. Yeah. It's quite a distinction then, in those towns. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're all a little different, yeah. I think. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. So what, what locked in Gunnison for you? What did it? Uh... Nate, my significant other and business partner, um, he was coaching at a gym in Denver and one of our members, current members, was going across to Gunnison and they kind of chatted and he was kind of letting us know that Faith, who is currently owning the gym, <laughs> was maybe going to sell sell the gym, you know, and but he's like, she's not sure yet. You know, this was before she had decided. And a couple months go by, we hadn't heard anything. Both of us kind of tired of working for other people. Mm -hmm. Nate just randomly called him, like, you know, called Jack, who it was, and 
Okay. Jack was like, you got to get down here. Faith's selling the gym. So we literally like had a friend's birthday party. We canceled. We drove to Gunnison and talked to Faith. And then we were coaching classes less than a month later. No kidding. Just left everything and just came out here. Oh, that's awesome. Serendipitous. Yeah. <laughs> very cool. So you mentioned, um, you know, be very being very intentional about checking out mountain towns to continue yeah. your fitness journey. When did your fitness journey start? How, how did that develop for you? I mean, for me, it started like pretty young. I always played sports and then in college, I always like lifted on the side and did all this stuff and was just always really into it. Wanted nutrition to be my major and, you know, you listen to other people more than yourself sometimes, <laughs> like didn't go that path. You know, and so it was always kind of something we were really into. And then we found CrossFit in like 2010 and got just loved it and was just like decided, you know, like this is something I want to do. I started coaching part time at the time I was working in oil and gas. And <laughs> then I decided I worked with oil and gas for like eight years and wow. coached part time uh towards the end of that and then probably within like three years of coaching part-time i decided to quit like my six-figure oil and gas job to be a poor struggling coach for other people <laughs> wow <laughs> how's that journey going are you glad you great. did great i mean i think i've always been happiness over anything else yeah. So I think that's super important to do something that you love versus, you know, working for the man and not loving what you do. Yeah. Yeah, I hear that. A um, couple of questions want to come out at once, so I'm going to stage them. So yeah, go for it. <laughs> you, you mentioned um, five year anniversary coming up with with the gym and and thus in yeah. in the Gunnison community. What do you what do you love about this area and, and about being part of the community? Well, Gunnison, everyone's so adventurous, which is like really like speaks to me. I love doing things in the mountains and outside and just being in Gunnison, you're just immersed in all of it. And, you know, I think that I'm just excited to see where the gym's going to go. We've grown so much from where what we got it from was like, I think, you know, we had like 15 paying members when we bought the gym. Huh. And so... You know, it's exciting to kind of explore more of our community. And now, you know, Gunnison's a really tight knit community and it's kind of hard to move here and get to be become a part of that community. And I feel like now we're actually starting to be a part of the community and kind of getting the word out of what we actually do might not be what people's perception is. Like we actually want to help people be outside, not be in a gym. And those type yeah. of things. So we're kind yeah. of just excited to see, you know, where the growth of the gym will go to help people be outside more. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Um, so just so all the listeners know, like I've been a member, I've seen what you do. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, from my experience, having some form of coaching, whether it's specific to boxing, which is one of my passions, um, but even going back to like, high school days of lifting and, you know, for whatever reason I found CrossFit and I, and I really, really enjoyed it. And it's a large part and because of, it is a passion for you and Nate. Like I can tell, um, the, the quality focus that you guys put into coaching is, is really special. And so I just wanted to acknowledge that and CrossFit has its own uh -huh. myths. Um, and so what is something that, you know, our listener may think about CrossFit that is not necessarily true or what might they need to know about CrossFit that they're not going to necessarily know unless they get in? Um, I would think the number one thing we hear the most, just like meeting people in the community and just really any community is that they feel like they need to be in shape before they start CrossFit. And I think that's yeah. probably the biggest misconception. You know, our gym is here for everyone and it's what gets you into shape, right? It gets you to the goals you want to have for your health. 
it's not something that you already walk in necessarily healthy or in shape, right? Like everything we do is made for all ages and ability. And then we are able to change movement based on people's abilities or past yeah, injuries yeah. that they might be walking in with. We can modify around that. And I think that's the number one thing is people think that you have to be this like super yoked, jacked person to do CrossFit. And by no means is that true. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Cause there is that impression, um, you know, CrossFit, the marketing of it, you know, is around the strongest people in the world, whatever phrase they, they use. And yeah. Uh, yeah. And yet uh, I would agree and concur. Like it can be for everybody. And, yeah. um, the, um, yeah. the gym community, how would you describe that? I think that's the biggest part of at least CrossFit Gunnison is the community, right? Like your friend next to you in class hasn't seen you in a while. They're probably going to text you and be like, hey, where have you been? You know, and totally. we do community events like and we want to do more things to help the community. This year, this Christmas we did, you know, we adopted a family as a gym and are getting them gifts and all the members kind of grabbed, you know, are grabbing gifts for this family and I think the one aspect that people don't realize it's it's a community more than anything. It's a gym, but it's both, you know. Hundred percent. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised I haven't gotten a text from Jim yet asking where I'm at. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> what do you think holds people back from attaining their fitness goals? I think. You know, I think our health and the way we look is part of our own mental health. Yeah. And I think it's it's uncomfortable to go somewhere that you feel uncomfortable, right? So I think a lot of times we hold ourselves back because we're scared, you know? We're scared to disappoint, you know, coaches or feel awkward in front of people next to you that aren't even paying attention to you, right? I always think it's like no one's... no one. You don't want, they don't want you to look at them and they're not looking at you as much as you don't want them to look at you. Yeah. So it's, you know, everyone, I think that's the main reason people don't achieve their fitness goals, right? Is that they, they feel this judgment that's actually not there. Hey. All right. So here's maybe a business question. And I've certainly thought uh -huh. about you and your gym a lot because I just love the topic of business in general. And then, yeah. you know, as I get involved with that community, uh, my mind can't help think about it, but what, what is it, what is it people buy when they buy that membership? Ooh, that's a good question. So, so, so. Um, I mean, I think they buy coaches, right? It's like, I mean, we do personal training also at CrossFit Gunnison, but you know, it's, it's that individual level of coaching and attention that we provide versus, you know, if you're on the Peloton bike and you're buying that app or, you know, you're just going to the gym by yourself, you don't have someone there that's knowledgeable that really actually does care about you and your goals and your health and your well-being of your safety, right? Whether you're making sure you're doing things correctly. Mm -hmm. You know, and a lot of people don't know how to do their own programming. So say you're like, okay, I want to get more in shape for ski season. Well, are you doing squats correctly? Are you, you know, doing things for, to achieve those goals? Yes. And we, we're able to help people achieve the goals that they, they want to they have. Yeah. So side note. Um, yeah. You know, when I, when I mentioned you and Nate, as, as far as coaches, you know, what really stands out to me is your attention to detail on individual form. Mm -hmm. Right, which I think is critical because not only is that going to yeah. make any training more effective, it's also going to make it safer. Yep. And and help limit or reduce um, any injury where somebody just going out wanting to get jacked may throw themselves out of whack pretty quick. Um, but what I find fascinating, you know, staying in that thread of business is, you know, it's it's not comfortable. Yes. Gyms are gyms are not comfortable, right? So you're not selling comfort. Um, but what I heard come out of that was, you know, you know, it's the it's facilitating 
their journey towards reaching their goals, whatever that might be, whether it's to mm-hmm. ski a certain line or bike or compete or just ultimately feel better, right? Because it's it builds self confidence. Oh yeah. That's cool. So Yeah, I think people when they're like tired at work, they don't realize that it could just be because they need to move actually more than they're moving. Hundred you know? percent. Hundred percent. Have you watched the Netflix documentary called Stutz yet? I have not. Oh my gosh, you need to read this down. (laughs) Yes, yes. It's S T U T Z. It's beautiful. Okay. Um, and I keep referencing this because it's so applicable, and it's it's totally applicable for this conversation. The one tool that's I mean, there's multiple tools in this thing. I'm not gonna give you any more details, but one okay. tool is called the the aspect of reality, and there's three aspects of this re- of reality of the human reality. and we we can't leave it. The first one is pain. We're always gonna have yeah. pain just being human, right? Um, the second one is uncertainty. The third one is constant work. Mm-hmm. So when you're bringing up, you know, when we're talking about the gym and, and CrossFit gym and, um, you know, we've talked a little bit about the, maybe, maybe it's a stigma. Maybe it's just a misinterpretation of, of CrossFit and not needing to have that in shape component as you go in, but it will help you get there. Um, there is going to be some discomfort along the way. There's going to be that pain, which is unavoidable, right? Yes. But that alone can be a blocker to somebody going to attain certain physical goals um, because they don't want to necessarily induce more pain. But if we recognize that we can't get out of it anyway, and then we become intentional about where we want to drive certain focus, it can actually attain more than we ever thought was possible. Oh, Um, definitely. And my favorite thing to say is, is, or I say it all the time, I guess, is like, if it was easy, everyone would have a six pack, right? Like we'd all walk totally. around, like I touched a dumbbell and now I'm completely in shape and everything's great. But, you know, and I think the people don't realize is like, yeah, maybe it's uncomfortable, but it's it's for your lifelong health. Like maybe you're in your forties now, but you're not going to be forever, right? You're not going to be in your twenties forever. And yeah, sure. it's like, you have to think about those things and Maybe you're a little more uncomfortable now to be more comfortable later. Totally. What wakes you up? What gets you really juice? Like when you have a good coaching session, whether it's in group or individual, and you just like, that was it. What is that? Uh, when people do like something for the first time, like then you've been really like working with them and you know they've been working hard, whether that's like their first pull up you know, their first double under, you know, just, or they finally like that power clean clicked for the first time, you know, and you just see someone's excitement, you know, there's, there's nothing better than that. And I don't like think it. like, I try to give high fives and be excited, but I don't think I can ever express like how that makes me feel for them and like how excited I actually am on the inside, you yeah. know? Yeah. Love it. Especially I'm not like the most bubbly human. (laughs) (laughs) You're pretty energetic, that's for sure. Um, (laughs) What are you excited about over the next few years? What do you you see in development for for the gym, for maybe even fitness in general? Well, I mean, I think mine and Nate's like long-term goals, I mean, would obviously be being more focused on alcohol strength, which when we, before we moved here, we had a barbell club in Denver, which we just focused on the USA weightlifting, which is snatches, clean and jerks. Um, and just doing more like strength focus right now we have, we train Western ski and snowboard team, their free ride team, awesome. uh, four days a week. And so just doing more of that stuff in the community of, you know, branching out besides just doing CrossFit of other things that are strength and conditioning related for, you know, sports specific, um, training for whether that's a sport team or you know a a ski team whatever it might be just kind of more branching out into that that realm of things and then yeah just just kind of getting into that more over the years yep any cold plunges coming saunas anything (laughs) no (laughs) i'm scared to do that are you (laughs) (laughs) i bet you'd enjoy it once you got in there 
I don't know. Just temporary, <laughs> temporary discomfort. <laughs> yeah, and then like we kind of, we like to do. We've already started doing more like mountain bike rides. Just trying to do more community based, you know, programs. Uh, I'm really trying to get the Steve's uh, Fire, which is forging resilient youth. It's CrossFit for resilient youth. Um, we're trying to get that started right now. So, kind of try to give back to the community a little more is always always yeah. a goal. Um, I was going to go to youth next. Tell me a little bit more about that. What what is that? So really forging like? resilient youth, uh, me and Nate both volunteered for them twice a week in Denver, um, and it's CrossFit for at risk youth. Yeah. So and gotta say we don't have a ton of programs set up. We have mentors, but we don't have a ton of programs that are for kids that are that are always like nonstop going. Where it's something right. like every day that. Or, you know, a couple of days a week, they have somewhere to go after school yep. and things like that. So this kind of gives them a place and then teaches them, you know, CrossFit, which is essentially just exercise, right? It's like you can call CrossFit a thousand different things, but at the end of the day, it's it's exercise, yeah. you know, and bench press and, you know, all these different things that will help kids kind of release some endorphins, but like in a healthy way. Yes. So it's one of our big goals right now, getting that program started here. I love that. Let me know how I can help with that. Yeah, definitely. Um, I definitely have a, I mean, my my history before starting a garage door company was all in nonprofit and um, worked with mentors and a lot of that population. So it, it hits a chord in the heart. Yeah. And I would love to see more opportunities, especially with movement. And, um, you know, that just trips into a conversation around somatics and, and moving energy and all sorts of awesomeness can come out of that stuff. So good for you guys. And, oh, yeah. And truly, let me know how I can help. I'm happy, happy to be brought into that. Um, so five years from now, 10 years from now, what is going to sing CrossFit? How cold strength look like? Um, hopefully a bigger space. <laughs> yeah. Um, definitely. And then, I don't know. We, I mean, we'd ideally, right, we'd be the premier place where people go to exercise and lift weights and have different classes for different ages and you know have a seniors class have a kids class and everyone in between and yeah just kind of being the place where people know that hey i need to get in shape this is where i want to go i love it are we is is crossfit gunnison um at the highest elevation of crossfit gyms no, because Crested Butte has one. They're higher okay, than us. And right Breckenridge on. has one. So there's a bunch of the mountain towns have them. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> Unfortunately, no. Yeah. Yeah. It's great altitude. That would be a cool stat. Either way, it's great altitude. <laughs> yeah. Um, how do interested folks get a hold of you guys, see what's going on, get involved? Um, our website, CrossFitGuttison.com, which is pretty easy to remember, has all of our information. Awesome. Um, social handles. I know you play on Instagram. Yeah. I see some photos. Uh, I think it's just CrossFit Gunnison. Right on. We'll drop all those into the show notes. Um, and I will give you a public promise, Christy. I will be back. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> just need it's to get a few now. priorities cleared out <laughs> and I'll free up my time. I really like working out at noon and it's been just challenging to free up the space. Yeah, so. I'm sure. <laughs> I will make that commitment. And um, yeah, I certainly appreciate you. I appreciate what you guys bring into the community and um, we'll promote it every chance we get. Thank you yeah. so much for the conversation, Christy. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. <laughs>